The mountains are calling and I must go. A popular and overused saying that perfectly encapsulates how I feel about these mountains. This trip was over a decade in the making. I have only seen these mountains from a distance, but have dreamt about the opportunity to explore them. This was my chance. Here I saw stunning views from the highest elevations I've been to, endless wildlife in this vast and wild landscape, abandoned cabins, and even fighter jets flying above me through the valley. Join me as I get off the grind in the mountains of Southern Idaho. About 12 years ago, I was sent to Boise for some work. And every day going to work and going back to the hotel after, I always looked at the mountains and I was like, man, I wanna be up there exploring this area. It looks so beautiful. So 12 years later, here we are. I'm gonna spend the next few days exploring the hills behind me. Um, I've been looking forward to this for a very long time. So I'm really excited to get this underway. Got the tires aired down. Hopefully that'll help because they beat the crap out of you at full PSI. I'm ready to start exploring. to where I really want to start exploring. I've been off-road for 30 miles now, and there's a ton of stuff that I saw on the way in so far, all these little offshoots that I would love to be able to explore at some point. Um, but I have the main area that I'm interested in, I wanna make sure I have enough time to explore that, so I'm not really doing anything right now but I think some of this warrants another visit because uh, there's a ton in this area that um, that I'm not going to explore this time around and that looks really interesting. There was so much life in these hills. Constant free range cattle, rabbits, chipmunks, and some of the most beautiful yet elusive birds I have ever seen. When I'm on a drive in an area I don't know, my senses are all absorbing everything they can. The scent of fresh yet thin air was regularly overpowered by sagebrush which dominated all other fragrances in the area. 
the blue of the sky, the green of the trees, the orange of the road, they all fought for my attention. The only thing I enjoy more than listening to the birds chirping is the sound of my tires rolling over dirt and rock. This is the sound of exploration, the sound of adventure and the unknown. I love this sound and so far, I'm absolutely loving my time here in Idaho. So I've been climbing for like, for like three hours and that's my view right now. Wow. I'm at 9,000 feet of elevation, which is the highest I've ever been. Um, to be honest, I'm kind of feeling the, the thin air up here. If I'm just walking around, it's not a big deal, but I climbed a little hill to get a shot and I was like out of breath. This was such a cool drive up here though. Ma'am. But it's not over because now I'm at 9,000 feet and it's time to start dropping down into the valley that I'm here for. So this, this will be my playground for the next few days. I'm very excited. There was a high elevation lake that I had on my list to check out while I was here. The lake sits above 10,000 feet of elevation and appeared to be accessible by vehicle. I would find out soon enough that that was not the case. I'm not gonna lie, I do not like shelf roads. I have a, a fear of heights. Don't know where it came from or even really when it started. But man, shelf roads get my heart pumping and that one was like, that was a good one. But now I'm up here. I was hoping I might be able to get all the way to the lake by vehicle, but it's definitely a walking trail and I got a bum knee, so that's not gonna happen. But there's this cool little cabin thing that we're gonna check out real quick.
Not much to it, unfortunately. I wish I knew the history of this. It's pretty cool. It would be a dope spot to live. Imagine waking up to this view. Yeah, pretty cool. I'm gonna head back down that very unpleasant road, for me at least, and uh, see what else we can find. This may very well be uh, be the camp spot for tonight. It's just got incredible views. It's windy, that's the only thing, but oh my God, might be worth it. So the F-15 is my favorite fighter jet of all time. I absolutely love it. Um, four just flew over me and I'm just like, oh, my heart's racing. That was the coolest thing ever. The last one, I was busy. I was trying to change my lens to my big telephoto so I could get some cool footage of it. But the last one was like, so there's this hill right here. It was on this side of the hill, um, I, I don't know, probably three, two, three hundred feet up. So it was like, it was really close and in a really sharp bank. So I could see the whole like top of it. It was so cool. Oh my God, that was one of the coolest things that's ever happened. I really want them to fly back through. I'll tell you what, that confirmed that this is camp. Uh, I'm not leaving this spot in case they come back. That was <laughs> so cool. I found camp really early, so I think I should explore. There's a river down there, and it looks like there's a little little step thing that I can use to get over this barbed wire fence that's kind of blocking it. So I'm gonna go check that out. Like a lover who lost her touch. At first I was hesitant. Oh, no. 
If you were at all interested in the route that I'm taking this next few days, I'm recording it and the GPX file will be on my website. It's going to be behind a paywall and the only reason I do that is because our access to lands like this is at risk every single day from people going out and just trashing the area and disrespecting the wildlife, the plant life. Um, it, leaving trash everywhere, uh, driving off designated paths, all of that stuff is, is not good and it threatens to close areas like this. So by me putting it behind a paywall or having people pay for that GPX file, hopefully that will limit um, that sort of activity happening. I don't want to charge for it. I feel like these lands are here for everyone right but i want to make sure that it's not just super easily accessible for everyone because that's when we have the issues that we have i'm very aware that by posting a video i could blow an area up um i've seen it happen not necessarily with me but with other people and i, I don't want to be that person so like i said i don't really want to charge for it any of the money that I do make from the sale of the GPX files is going to go straight to the U.S. Forest Service. Uh, they are always in desperate need of funding, so hopefully that'll help a little bit. Like I said, I don't want to make a profit off selling GPX files because I feel like this is land that everyone should be able to have access to. All I'm trying to do is prevent people from trashing it. And by telling you where I'm at publicly on a place like YouTube or Instagram or something like that, that increases those chances. So um, I don't want to gatekeep, but that's just where we're at right now. So I set up the annex. Um, it's supposed to get pretty windy tonight and there's a chance of rain so that'll give me some shelter from both of those elements not to mention you know it's it's new to me and I'm still testing it out and, and stuff like that um, so the more time I get with it the better cooking I wanted to show you something about this ice co how I organize it on trips like this um, it's it's personal preference I thought it might be something you're interested in because I don't this is a dual zone but I don't use it as a traditional dual zone where you have a freezer and then a refrigerator um, both compartments are at the same temperature but I do that for a reason So I put all of my like kind of beverages, snacks, um, components of dishes that I'm gonna make in this front compartment since there's more space up there and it's easily accessible. 
and then in the back is where I keep um, kind of all my meat, all the stuff that I'm not gonna need easy access to. So this is just like a quick and easy meal that I like to have on the road, but I have um, my bacon back there and eggs and chicken. That allows me to get to the quick access stuff a lot easier than having to go all the way back there or having just one massive compartment that I have to sift through. And then it also separates the meat from, you know, the rest of the food. Everything is covered in there. It's not gonna get like contaminated or anything like that, but I also don't wanna go reach for a Reese's bar and then grab a bag full of raw chicken. So anyways, that's how I have it set up. I hope that helps you at all. If you're interested in getting an ISCO, I have an affiliate link with them that'll save you 12% off. So go check that out in the description. Um, but yeah, that's it. Back to cooking. I know it's a little dark in here right now, but the other reason I put this annex up is because I wanted to see how much heat it would hold. So, winter camping, if I can turn this um, <clears throat> this little Ignic fire can on and just let it warm this up and, and be a nice kind of cozy place to, to hang out in for the night. So, I wanted to kind of test that out. So far it's going really well. I have this window open right now. I need to close that, but it's already so much warmer in here. It's very cold up here. It's like I'm at 8,000 feet of elevation. The wind's been ripping all day. Um, it's been pretty chilly. After dinner and warming up inside the annex, I stepped out to take in the views. I was just looking over the river below me when I caught movement in my periphery. This bull moose was just grazing on the bushes down by the river, so I grabbed my camera and got what I could of him. I have never seen a moose in the wild before, and they are a beautiful creature. After spending about a half hour just observing, it was time for bed, so I crawled in the tent and fell asleep dreaming of what day two would have in store. I was really trying to find like a local roasted coffee on my way in. Um, and I didn't find anything, didn't find anything until I got to the point where I couldn't even find bagged coffee. Like 
from Starbucks or anything like that. So stopped at a gas station and asked her, she felt bad for me, so she gave me some of her gas station coffee, just the stuff that they make coffee from. And um, and we'll, we'll test it out. But thank you to the lady at the gas station in the middle of nowhere for literally saving my life. All right, moment of truth. It's, it's actually really good. Pleasantly surprised by that. Okay, so spent some time reviewing the map and the route and kind of trying to figure out um, what I can do with the gas that I have. I have just over a half a tank of gas right now and then I have four gallons of gas, actually three and a half in the roto packs, which will get me another, um, I don't know, 45, 50 miles. So with that said, I think I'm gonna continue the path that I had routed out. Um, it's gonna take us over um, to the mountains kind of behind us where the sun's coming up, so to the east. Um, and it should all be um, pretty heavily forested, I believe, from what I've seen. And we'll definitely get to high elevation. The highest elevation is uh, 10,500 feet of elevation over there. So I think that's the game plan. Should have plenty of gas to get there and then get back out. Cause once we complete that trail, it's another 40 miles to um, a gas station. So that's the plan for today. I'm gonna enjoy this sun though. Cause uh, it was cloudy yesterday and it was cold. So, some sunlight feels really nice. Mm. is definitely passable I think it doesn't look like it gets too deep but um, I sent the drone up to see what was on the other side and the trail kind of just stops um, on the map it shows that it is going all the way through to the road I need to get to but there's clearly no trail for me to actually follow once I get to the other side um, and making your own trail on uh, land like this is, is a definite no-go. So, looks like I'm backtracking. Bit of an impasse right now. This is the route I had planned on going. And then this is an alternative route which I had mapped out. That looks more intriguing to me, at least initially. But it, the map kind of suggests that there's less to explore. So 
I think this is still the way I'm going to go. And uh, in hopes that once I, because I'll be on this road for a little bit and then I'll turn off onto some uh, less maintained roads. And at that point it should get interesting again. This does look intriguing though. Let's do it. gonna take it's gonna be super cool but I cannot do that um, so I guess I'm gonna go back and take a left where I took a right After many hours on the trail, I found this rough trail that dead ended at a hiking trailhead, which is really common in this area. It also had a great clearing riverside that was perfect for a quick lunch before getting back on the trail. So that's exactly what I did.
found a pretty awesome spot. You guys know I'm a sucker for river spots. Uh, and this is a solid one. It's like right on the river. Beautiful view of the hills behind. There's an awesome like rock formation right there. What I also really like about this spot is there's supposed to be gusts of like 27 knots uh, tonight. And this is somewhat sheltered because of all this right here. Like the difference between wind here and the wind where the Bronco is, is actually noticeable. Um, so this might, as it kicks up, so this might actually give me some shelter from that, but this is sweet. I'm gonna um, continue going down this road, see if there's any more gems. turn um it's weird like looking at the map here so you can see the route i went and then this white line up there is where i was supposed to go that white line that road looked like it was completely grown over and not a trail anymore so i and this path was way more beaten down so i thought this was the way to go but Anyways, I'll backtrack a little bit and take that, take that other route, not a big deal. So now you can see why I didn't take it. it does not look like a trail. I did not know this when I started this trail, but this is 100% an ATV trail. It kind of like forks off. There's an upper route that is for vehicles and the lower that's for ATV, I'm assuming. It's not marked at all, but this was very clearly for an ATV. The end is like right there. Um, so I'm gonna try and push through and get to it. It's just really, really tight. This view is insane. There's not an actual campsite here. I've been trying, this is what I've been searching for is to try and find a view of, of those mountains. I've seen them everywhere I've been today. They just tower over this entire area and I was really hoping to get a view of them, but it's not in not in the cards. A lot of spots that do have a view are all, are all taken. So I think I'm gonna head back to that river spot that I pointed out a little bit earlier That'll put me a lot closer to where I need to be for tomorrow anyways, because I'm, I'm pretty deep in the, in the trail right now, but that's the best view I've seen of those mountains yet.
Unfortunately, this is where my trip ended. I had another day planned to explore a different part of this area, but unforeseen circumstances forced me to change plans. I had waited 12 years for this trip, 12 years of dreaming about exploring the mountains and looking down on the city that introduced them to me in the first place. I have even more on my list now to see than I had before. I will be back to this area to see what else it has to offer. But until then, I hope you're able to get off the grid and off the grind. I'll see you in the next one.